Hey everyone, welcome to WCode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a TypeScript app inside of Docker. And we're also going to have it reload with live code changes. So as an example of what we're going to build, first, we have an npm script that will build our Docker image. So we run npm run build Docker. This will build a Docker image, of course, for our TypeScript code. Next, we run a command saying npm run start Docker. We run this and we get our application up and running inside a Docker container. You can see the code output here, and we have live changes. So say I delete this to just say hello name. We get hello wit code. Say inside this cheese file, we get rid of these values, except for hi, we get it. Live code changes again. And this is all being done inside a Docker container. But so this is what we're gonna be building. So to begin, let's first initialize this as an NPM project, NPM init ES6-Y. This will create a package.json file with the type set to module so we can use more modern ES6 import syntax. Now let's install TypeScript, which is simply an npm package called TypeScript. We want to install it as a development dependency as TypeScript is used for development and not for production. And now to get the benefits of TypeScript, we also need to install some npm packages from the at type scope. So for example, npmi at types-node is a package that contains type declaration files or files ending in a .d, .ts extension containing types for Node. And we also want to install this as a development dependency. And now let's configure TypeScript. And the way we're gonna be doing this is by running the command npmx, or mpx tsc dash dash init. So this, what this command does is create a tsconfig.json file. And this file indicates the root of a TypeScript project and is used to configure the TypeScript compiler. If we look inside this file, we can see the default configuration for our TypeScript compiler. Most of the contents in this file is commented out and uncommenting a certain line will enable that functionality. Some examples of configuration options. One is outdir, so out directory here. And let's change this to be dist. In specifying out the outdir to be dist, specifies the output directory of the transpiled JavaScript files to be a folder called dist. So now when we transpile our TypeScript files, they will be placed in a folder called dist. And we should, because of this, we should actually update inside package.json, our main entry point of this to be dot dash dist dash index.js. Now let's create a folder inside our directory called source, which will contain our source code. And let's use, then use tsconfig.json to specify this folder as the location of our TypeScript files. And we can do that with the key include. So this include key here tells the TypeScript compiler to compile every TypeScript file inside the source directory and its subdirectories. Now let's also use tsconfig.json to specify the folders we want the TypeScript compiler to ignore. We can do that with the exclude key. We want to ignore node modules and our dist folder. And these exclude are relative to this include, by the way, but I always just put in node modules and dist anyway. Next, what we want to do is because we specified our project type as module here, which means we'll use ECMA script, we need to set the module key in here to node next. And actually I see an issue here. And that's because we forgot a comma, so that should clear it up. So we wanna set this module key in here, not common JS, but node next. And what this module key does is it sets the module system for the transpiled JavaScript files. Setting it to node next will allow as to basically trans, transpile ECMA script files to JavaScript ECMA script files and common JS files to JavaScript common JS files. What this really means is that the transpiled files can either have ECMA script import export or common JS require and module exports. And once again, we need to set it to something other than common JS because in here we have it set to module. But now let's add some TypeScript code. So inside our source file, let's create an index.ts file and also a file called cheese. TS. Inside our index.ts file, let's just place in some simple code. So it's just a function that accepts a name and logs it out. And we just say wit code. So the log hello wit code. And in our, or actually we want this in our index.ts file inside. So paste that in there. And in our cheese file, let's just export a default array containing hi and hello. And then let's import it in our index file. And we seem to have an error in here. And that's actually because we got this the wrong way around. We need two stars here and one there. So once again, just this tells TypeScript compiler to compile every TypeScript file inside our source directory and also any subdirectories. But so now just to demonstrate what we can do, let's just compile or transpile our TypeScript into JavaScript by running the command mpx 
TSC. And what we first get is we get an error actually saying, did you mean cheese.js? And this is because we're using ECMA script, so we have to specify the extension. We wouldn't have to do this, of course, if we were using, say, a module bundler like Webpack, but with just TypeScript, we do need to do this. So run mpx tsc, and here's our output disk folder with both our files. But so this command here, so mpx tsc, if we don't provide any arguments to it, then the TypeScript compiler searches for a tsconfig.json file. In other words, when we run this command, it will run the TypeScript compiler with the configuration we supplied inside tsconfig.json. And now finally, let's start creating some package.json scripts. So down here by scripts, let's first add a clean command that removes our dist folder. So now running npm run clean will remove recursively our dist folder. And note that on Windows, this command rm might be something different. I think it's rm dir or something like that. And now let's add a build command to build our TypeScript project. So now if we run, say, npm run build, then it will build our project by converting our TypeScript code into JavaScript code using our tsconfig.json configuration. And of course, it'll remove this folder first before running this. But so this builds our project, but we should also add a command to run our project. And to run this project, we'll be using the libraries nodemon and also tsnode, both as development dependencies. So this tsnode library here provides TypeScript execution and ECMA script support while nodemon is a library, so this one right here, is a library that automatically restarts the node application when files are changed. Let's now create a start script that uses both of these packages. So we'll call it start. So what this command does is it runs nodemon and we use this exec flag, which is an option of nodemon to monitor different programs. So essentially we're gonna be using this exec functionality to monitor our TypeScript application. And here, what we're gonna be running is node with the TS with the loader tsnode-esm, and this tells Node to load modules with tsnode and ECMA script, so import and export, and also to register tsnode without using the CLI that tsnode provides. And of course, we do this against our main entry point file in TypeScript, which is source index-ts. So now we just have to run npm start. Our application runs. We see hello wit code. Let's change this and see if we get some live reloading. Say wit code of justice. If we reload this, we get hello, wit code of justice. Sweet, so now our application is working, but let's get it working inside a Docker container. So to do this, let's first, at the top level of our program, create a Docker file. So Docker file right here, and we're gonna use this to build our Docker image. The base image for our Docker image is gonna be Node, specifically Node version 18 of the Alpine Linux distribution. And now let's create a working directory. We're gonna call it dash, or we're gonna call it server. And what this will basically do is just make a directory at the top level of our container called server, and this is where all our code is gonna be. But next, let's implement some layer caching by copying over our package.json file and then running npm install. So now, what this does is it copies over our package.json file to the server directory and then runs this command to install our node modules. Next, we wanna copy over our TypeScript configuration file. So also inside the server directory, we're gonna copy over tsconfig.json, and then we will run the command npm start. So running this, so this line here, cmd npm start, will run our npm start script after the Docker container starts. And that script is of course this right here, but it will run it inside the container. And also note that we don't actually copy over any of our source code here, and that's because we'll bring it into the application with a volume for live reloading. But so now let's build a container and also an image from the Docker file. And to do this inside package.json, let's create a script, which is going to be called build docker. So here, what this does is it'll build a Docker image called my image using our Docker file located in the same directory, which of course is this one here. So now let's cancel out of this terminal. And now let's create our Docker image by running this command. So it'll be npm run build docker. You can see everything being built. And actually I built this earlier, so things were cached, but if we look in here, we can see how everything that we specified inside our Docker file. And now let's check this image exists, but if we run Docker images, we will see this one right here called my image. So let's cancel out of here. So now let's use this image to create a Docker container. And we're gonna call, do this with a script right below our build Docker script. And this one's gonna be called start Docker. So now if we run the command npm run start Docker, 
we're going to build a Docker container off of the image, my image. We're going to name it my C with this flag name. And then this line here is very important. We're going to create a volume that maps our source directory, so this one right here, to a source directory inside our server folder, which is the work directory in the container that we create here. And what this will do is allow for live code reloading. So if we make changes in here, it'll be reflected in the same file system inside the container. But so now all we have to do is run this command and this is all running inside our container. So we ran our container and then when the container was built, we run this nodemon command. And let's just check every, all the live reloading is working. So wit code of justice and tranquility. And that's reflected here. Let's also say log out our cheese file like this. We get that logged out and let's add something else in here. Of course, let's add cheese and it's all updating. Sweet. And now something else I want to address for the end of this video is if you try and press control C to exit out of this terminal, it won't work. Um, and that's because on this command, we need to specify dash IT, which basically makes an interactive terminal with our container so we can exit out of this app. So right now, the only way to do this would be to kill the terminal, open up a new one, but we'll have to stop our container. So stop my C. That'll take around 10 seconds or so. Then let's remove it. So docker rm my C. And now let's just start this again because our image is already is still built. We didn't remove our image. And we'll do npm run start docker. Everything runs. Uh, let's double check the reloading again. Just type some nonsense in there. We can see it here. And now if we press control C, it sends a signal to the container and we exit out. But so that was my video on creating a TypeScript app inside a Docker container with live reloading. I wanna thank you for liking and subscribing today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, thanks again for watching and have a good one.